Welcome to episode 212 of Missing Pieces. This is my weekly audio journal podcast where I talk about what I'm up to and what I'm into. And I'm happy to be here doing this with you on this lovely Sunday morning. That's right. We're back into the last minute routine. In fact, it's 8.43 a.m. right now, and I have this deadline self-imposed to myself that I like to have this out by Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern. So we've got about three hours to not only record this podcast, but get it edited, which basically is just me chopping off the few seconds where I click that button in the beginning and the end and uh, getting it uploaded to YouTube, which is somewhat time consuming. But we'll have it done. We'll have it out there for you to listen to, at least the few people that listen to it right away. But most peeps, I think, kind of do this throughout their week on their own accord, and that's perfectly fine with me. I'm just happy that you're here along with me as I talk about my week, which we have to go all the way back to last Friday when I recorded. This is like a nine-day episode, I suppose. I think I left off in the afternoon. That evening, after doing yard sales and stuff and having a pretty good day, that evening, we actually had a social engagement, one that I was a little hesitant to go to, as I've learned in the past with these teacher get-togethers, a uh, situation where they were having like this get-together with all the teachers, kind of the end-of-the-year type thing. And Cody asked if I'd like to go along, and uh, she like wanted me to go with her just to have somebody there. And I was like, okay, great. But I knew going into this, that these teacher things kind of just turn into like a, a teacher, like, uh, I, I don't want to say a rant session, but you know what it's like when you work with a bunch of people and then you all get together and you have that common bond where it's like, oh, we all work at this place. We know all these people. We have the same complaints, the same things we like. Uh, all these things are happening. We have this thing that we relate to. Well, that's great if you're in the system, but if you are coming in as like a spouse, and I was one of the few spouses that were there, it was just mostly like the teachers, you're kind of out of the loop a little bit, at least in that regard, but I have to hand it to these teacher folk. They're very good about getting you like involved and kind of like embracing you into the the conversation and the mix, and it was a really great time, and I had fun, and Cody was thankful that I went, so it was just like a win on all Accords. Plus, they had some pretty good food there too. Lots of food, actually. I was. They started bringing out <laughs> hamburgers, and like everybody had a hamburger. And then they came out with like these chicken sandwiches, and it was like, okay, man. Like a couple people get those. Then they come out with hot dogs, and I'm like, holy smokes, man. Like people know how to provide at parties, and I think that's kind of cool. Like you know, you're you're really just like going all in. But I did feel bad for the host. His name was Nate. He was um, <laughs> he was like preparing the food the whole time. And I guess that's the downside of, of throwing a shindig is like, you got to be the, the hostess with the mostess and uh, it kind of gets you out of it. But maybe if that's like his thing and that's what he likes, and this is like his yearly thing. They do this every year. This is my first time going. Uh, and I, I will go back because it was, it was a good time, even being a non-teacher in the mix. It was interesting to hear. I'd say like my biggest takeaway that I enjoyed was them talking a lot about how students have changed over the years, particularly like after the COVID years and some of the things that like aren't as good as they used to be. I know we kind of get into the good old days routine and maybe like back when you were in school, things were a certain way and now things are like maybe not as good, but you know, these are teachers and there's administration and you know, if everyone feels the same way, which it seems like that's the case, you can all get together and you can make changes. I think that's the case for almost anything. Like if enough people decide on something. And we'll talk more about this. This this could be the topic of the week and maybe something inspirational to you. If you just decide that you want something, you can make it happen. It might take more than just you. It might take time, effort, money in some cases, a collective of people, some help, uh, but you can you can make change and you can make things better. And uh, I want to talk more about that, but that that's later. We're going to do like a, a day-by-day recap here of my of my week. And, uh, we'll, we'll get to that in something that made me happy and like boosted my self-esteem. Oh, I should say, speaking of being happy, not related to that at all. <laughs> I was trying to segue. Okay. Give me some credit here. I have, I'm like a little congested right now. So that might come through in the, the audio segment of this, which is like the, the most important part. I don't know what it is. I just got something going on up here and that happened earlier this, this week too, which I'll get to as well. But, uh, Saturday, another busy day, went out community yard sailing that morning, love to do it. And that day was really fun. This is a video I just put out. I'm all obviously behind on videos too, because I'm just not like finding the time to edit. That's something I enjoy doing too. 
those videos require a little bit more than trimming off the, the first second and last second. It's like trying to make a, a whole morning of yard sailing entertaining. And I think I, I did that in our most recent video where uh, we went out with Clark Mann this time and uh, we were just going to community yard sales, having a good time. I'm out just mainly like my main goal is just petting dogs, honestly. Like if we're talking about yard sales these days, I've got so much stuff, not only for myself, but to sell on eBay that I'm just in dog petting mode. But sometimes scores come up and uh, scores did come up that day, especially for Clark Mann, who found this just this silly little bubble wand for 50 cents. And I can't tell you. I mean, I can because I made a video about it. How much fun we had with that bubble wand. I'm I may have had more fun than he did. I was doing drive by bubblings on people. I like put it out the window. <laughs> And there's just bubbles going down the street and people are walking on the sidewalk and Clark's having a blast with it. And like, that's all it takes sometimes for a little dude who's, you know, we're going to yard sale after yard sale, driving along, getting out, walking around. That's a lot for a little kid. You know, it's just, he wants to have fun. All it takes is a 50 cent bubble wand and all of a sudden he's back in the game. But what also got him back in the game that day is like towards the end, he was kind of just like, okay, I'm ready to be done. But we went to like one last one. There's always one last one. And then you find another one. That's the one last one. I found Pokemon cards, which happens to be Clark Man's his thing right now. So I go to the car and I'm like, hey, there's Pokemon cards out here. Bro just sprints for these things. And it was a situation where it was like a pick a brick. Some of you Lego enthusiasts probably know what that's like, where you're filling up a, a tin essentially of as many cards as you want for five bucks. And like there's kids there just piling them into these these tins. Clark Man's looking at every card, looking at the back, getting all excited about each one individually. But eventually it took some time and I was happy to kind of wait there while he did it. Uh, he ended up filling up a tin and he was just so excited. He told me so many times afterwards that he thought I was pranking him where I was like, there's Pokemon cards out here. But he got them and he was excited. He's putting them in his binder. He's, he's putting it all together. And I just love the time that Clarkman is in right now in the world of card collecting because to me, to him it's not about the money at all it's not about what a card's worth there's no financial side of it whatsoever it's just about the the pure love of the characters and the artwork and i wish i could go back to that time in the world of cards because i was there and i think i've shared this story before where i used to collect uh, basketball and football cards and I collected them based on the athlete and like the the pose they were in and how cool the card looked. And then my friend like duped me one day on a on a trade on a Brett Favre card that I didn't even I didn't like the card very much because he was just like standing there like holding a ball and eating his helmet on. And I didn't like the card that much, so I traded him for something. And then he goes on to tell me that that card was worth like I don't know like eight dollars or something like that. And I felt like I got like ripped off, you know? And then ever since then, like I would get the tough stuff and Beckett guides to uh, like the prices. And I would put like a little like note as to how much each of the card is worth. And I couldn't make a trade unless a card is worth something and a card had to be worth something to be good. And money ruined everything. Just like money ruins everything in the real world. It, it When money gets involved, and I think I talked about this last week, or it's at least something I've been thinking about how with technology, things are always good in the beginning. And it's like, oh, this is a great thing. But then money gets involved and people are trying to abuse it or trying to make money off advertising or whatever. YouTube's a prime example of this. Broadcast yourself was a lovely thing in the beginning and people made videos because they love to do it. And then eventually, and I guess I'm guilty of this too, eventually money became involved and everyone wanted to be a YouTuber because they could make money doing it. And advertisers wanted to make money on YouTube and YouTube wanted to make money on YouTube and it just turned into like this ad fest and like inauthentic mess in some cases. I, I do think that YouTube still has treasures and it's my most favorite social media platform. But you, that's just like one example of how when money comes into the fray, bad things happen, but also good things because people wouldn't invest the time they do if money was involved. You wouldn't have a lot of the cool stuff that, that you see because like who could invest 40 hours into making like one video in some cases? That's not me. <laughs> but, you know, it's it, you have to invest to, to make money. There has to be money to be made. So, you know, it's it's a good and bad thing, I suppose. But I do hearken back, and maybe you're this way too, hearken back to the days of uh, the innocence of childhood in, in so many ways before the world's worries and all of that stuff comes into existence for you. So uh, I, I try to uh, hope that Clark Mann can 
and absorb that for as long as he possibly can. But we had a great morning. Uh, cut, sh cut short a little bit because there was a couple more yard sales we're going to hit, you know, a couple more last ones. But we had to be back because we were invited to a birthday party for one of Cody's co-workers' sons, that, her and the co-worker friends. And it just so happens to be that she has a son that's like six, turning six that day, in fact. And uh, Clark and him are like great buddies. They play so well together. They're just so great. And we were invited to a pool party there, and I went to that as well. And boy, did I have fun. It not only here, – here's the deal. Not only did – was it like a pizza party already sold, but it was a pool party as well. And I became – and this is quite the honor for me. I became like one of the only dads that went into the pool, and I became the official kid thrower. These kids – I don't know what it is. They just don't learn their lesson. They come over and I have to throw them across the pool and then they want thrown again. I got a pretty good workout that day, but they were just having a blast. And it was, cr I, I never saw so much chaos in a pool. There were so many kids in there. There was pool, like floaties, pool toys, squirt guns. It was like, it was literally a war in there. And I had so much fun because we all know that I'm a kid at heart. And I was happy to do that. You know, it's just like, I think a lot of these kids, they just, they just want somebody to give them some type of acknowledgement or attention or to mess with them. And I'm that guy. I never, it's so weird because prior to having Clark, man, I was never, I don't, I wouldn't consider myself like a, a kid guy. You know, I was like, in fact, I've talked before about how I don't feel like I fully took advantage of when my nephews were Clark's age because I, it wasn't me then. But then like, once you have a kid, it's like you get in that zone and I know how to engage with kids and I know how to like interact with them. And it, it just was awesome. So we had such a fun time. We brought some pizza home. In fact, just trying to get rid of it. Another situation. This is actually the sister of the of the guy that had the party the night before. Two different uh, two different parties, two different people, same family. And uh, she ordered like five like party pizzas. There was a good number of people there, but it was a lot of pizza. So uh, Clark and I were eating pizza for a couple of days after that. But man, it was it was such a fun time and a fun day. Like it was just we we're just super busy over that weekend. And this whole week was was just crazy. It seemed like every day was happening, but we did have a little bit of a detour and that was like Sunday into Monday. I got, I got sick. I got like a cold. I don't know. It's not related to what I have now. I don't think, cause I kind of got better. I just have congestion now, but I was just feeling zapped. And I didn't know if it was from Clark man, who's been like perpetually sick for like the last month from school. Like it seems like every week he gets like a new thing. I'm thankful that he's done. We'll get to that. Or if it was because I went to Hershey Park that Thursday and I was thinking about how many things did I touch that hundreds of other people touched like inside when you're holding on to like the, the coasters. How many people in lines did I like stand right beside like face to face with basically like everywhere you go. It's kind of a germ fest, I suppose. But yeah, like Sunday into Monday, I was wiped. In fact, I went to take Roxy for a walk on Monday and like I got to the bridge, which we usually walk past that. And I'm just like, dude, I don't know if I'm making it back. I think that's being a little dramatic, but I was just like, oh, I got to go home. I was making a vlog that day. So it's, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to film my day because that's what I do. I like to have record of my days. Plus it helps with this podcast. <laughs> Sometimes I go back. I've been doing a terrible job at keeping notes of things. Like I think of things on the fly and I'm like, Ooh, I want to talk about that. Or like things that happen throughout the day. And I'm like, Ooh, this is going to be a, an interesting topic. And then like Friday or in some cases, Sunday comes and I'm like, what am I going to talk about this week? I got to do better at keeping notes. I'd love to have like, I might make a little written. This is a cool idea. Let me know what you think about this. I mean it. I want to make like a little diary of each day, a journal, if we're being manly. I make a little man journal of each of my days of like, you know, highlights of that day. And I would love to do this thing where I record some footage of like those various things, like not you know, just recording my day throughout the day and then do a voiceover of my journal with the footage behind it and just make like a, a two minute video out of it or a, a YouTube short or a come in TikTok. We could do that. And my buddy Ronnie, he's kind of experimenting over in the world of TikTok and he's having some great success over there. And I just was like, I, I just, I don't really want to build TikTok, but I think it'd be kind of neat to do. Like if I made each one of these specifically a minute or less, they could be a YouTube short and maybe somebody would find that and be like, oh, this guy does like a little journal every day. I'm going to watch these all in succession. Be kind of a cool idea. Plus, I could still like have my long form vlogs, right? I could still make my videos I like to make because I was thinking like 
some people like they've been thriving in the world of short form content, but I'm looking through my videos every time I upload one and it's, you know, 25 minutes long. And I'm like, I, I don't exist in the world of short form. I'm, I'm more likely to make a video that's, that's 30 minutes than 30 seconds. You know what I mean? Like that's just where I'm at. And like, I have too much to say and too much to share seemingly that, uh, I, I, I would need to really edit myself to, to get it down to that. But if I was just reading my journal, which I guess I couldn't put anything too personal in there, you know, but, uh, well, yeah, I, w I don't think I'd want to sh overshare. Like a journal is supposed to be something where you can share your deepest, darkest secrets. I consider mi missing pieces to be that, uh, maybe, maybe not quite that far, but you know, we, we get pretty, pretty real here. I feel like maybe, maybe too real for some, I don't know, but, uh, yeah, I was kind of down on uh, on Monday, but I felt pretty good going into Tuesday. And this is where I think our, our topic of the week comes into play. I made the decision that day that I was going to do something to make a change. Gonna make a change for once in my life. Okay, I'm done. Michael, rest in peace. Uh, the garden. I'm pointing to the garden right now. You, you can not see it on camera if you're watching this. You can listen to this, by the way. Missing pieces. Look it up on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. If you want to take me with you on the go and you don't want to pay for data and all that stuff. And if you don't want to see what you're seeing right now, God bless you. Listen to it on Apple Podcasts. Leave one of those uh, likey review things. Be like, oh my goodness, greatest podcast ever listened to. The the uh, the insights in this have changed my life drastically. I'm now living on another planet in the future. I don't know. Don't write that. That's weird. My garden was essentially just become a weed field over the, over the months leading into the spring. And Cody asked me this year, she's like, are we doing a garden? And I was just like, you know, we're going to be doing some traveling and stuff. Are we going to be around to even see it through? And then I've been like, really like contemplating doing some raised garden beds. Cause we have this huge garden area that's hard to manage. And I thought if we had raised beds, it'd look so nice. And it'd be so easy to like, not only plant, but to manage and we can get some good soil and stuff in there. But I was like up in the, up in, up in the arms, I was up in the air on it. But then on Tuesday I decided, you know what? Today, I'm going to do this. So I needed to take care of those weeds. And I thought, I need a weed whacker because I don't have one. Edge strimmer, whatever you want to call it. String eater, weed eater. I call it a weed whacker. That's what we call it here in Pennsylvania. We call it a weed whacker. And I was like, I need one of these. And I was like, I don't want to spend a lot of money on one because I'm probably only really going to use it for this like one time. And maybe in the chicky on yard because I just take like a manual mower in there and mow that down. I don't want to disrupt them. And, you know, it does the job and it's good exercise. So I, we have a Harbor Freight nearby and if Harbor Freight is known for anything, it's known for maybe it's uh it's cheap in terms of price and quality tools. It's like a Lepin Lowe's kind of, sorry, if you're a Harbor Freight employee, enthusiast, stock owner, whatever you are, uh, I'm just, I'm just relaying how, how would I have known about it? I've only been there a few times and I, I the first thing I bought was a pressure washer that kind of did its job, but kind of sucked. And then I bought this time a $27 weed whacker, <laughs> a plug-in one, but it was like, okay, I have be near the house. I've got a cord that I can run down. I got like a hundred feet of extension cord. Let's try this thing out. And when you know it, that freaking thing for $27 blasted those weeds. And it was crazy. The, the funny part was I, I documented all this. You'll see a video on this when I get it uploaded. Finally, I think it might be like the next, next video possibly. I was like, once I got it done, I thought, well, I'm going to go through this again. I'm going to go over it. I went to turn it on. Thing would not turn on. I was like, well, I think I got my money's worth. $27 to completely take care of all these weeds in this garden, which it's like 27 feet by maybe like 16 feet, this whole garden area. Maybe more than that. Um, I was like, all right, good. I got it done. That sucks. It doesn't work. But maybe it's just overheated. <laughs> so I, I let it cool a little bit. And when you know, it started back up again. Because I ran that thing for like probably like half an hour straight, just given it and uh went back through it got it all down really good i ended up going to lowe's i got some of the landscaping fabric to put down to kind of keep the weeds suppressed and to not allow light or water to get to them so they kind of die off and i got all these little pins and i put those down and i also in the same day i went to the greenhouse and i got all of the stuff that i want to grow for this year the only thing they didn't have was zucchini but i bought some zucchini seeds when i was at the store and i planted those into cups so we'll have zucchini as well I, things i bought Various types of tomato. I got like a, a beef steak, which are good for uh, BLTs. Do you? You probably don't care about this. Uh, let's just say I, I got like three or four different types of tomatoes. I got th three different peppers. Two. Uh, one is a bell pepper. I'm going into this, aren't I? You can't stop me. 
a, like a bell pepper, a sweet like red pepper, and I got jalapenos, which are great. I got some onions, some cucumber, and then once you plant zucchini, like that's it. Um, but there's more to this story, which I guess I'll just share here. This is a big activity. Well, no, I'll wait. I'm going to keep this in chronological order. Let's just say that I ended that day with the garden completely transformed from giant weed field with like thigh high weeds to completely covered with landscaping fabric pinned down looking fantastic. It looked like a covered pool essentially is what it looked like when I was done. And that was the first time this week that I felt that sense of accomplishment that I get where I was like, I decided that this was going to happen. I went out and did the things that needed to make it happen. And then I made it happen. Maybe that's the title of this episode, make it happen. Because when I was done that day, I was just like, dang, I'm so glad that I did all that. It took me a trip to Harbor Freight and to the, the greenhouse and to Lowe's to do it all, but it was done and it was looking good and ready for the next chapter, which happens in a few days because the next day was this is Wednesday. This is Clark Mann's last day of school. And uh, they were getting out early. In fact, it was kind of silly for them to even go in because Clark gets to school like nine o'clock in the morning. And at 10 o'clock, they were doing a like a third grader uh, ceremony as like a graduation because the way our school works is you're in there from kindergarten to third grade. Then you move to the next school for fourth through sixth. And then you go to middle school, which is seventh and eighth. And then high school, which is ninth through twelfth. So he's done at his first school and they were doing like a ceremony where each of the kids got an award for a various thing. And I was very curious to see what Clark would get on his. And uh, I was so proud to find out that his award was for the most artistic. And uh, he came up, the art teacher presented him with the award. And I was like, dang, that's so cool. Because you may not know this about me. And this is a an aspect of my life that I don't even like really, I, I should propel and I should have propelled into college, I was voted most artistic of my senior class, <laughs> but I don't really even do any art other than like, if you want to say making videos is an art, but I don't, not really. I was always into drawing. I love doing that. And maybe I should, I should get back into that. It's never too late, right? To make it happen. Remember the title, Greg, cause you'll forget at the end of this, you'll be like, well, I was going to title this something. It's like me think, recounting my days. But to see Clark Mann get that award too was really cool. And the fact that his art teacher out of the entire third grade class gave him that award was neat. He also got his like certificate of completion on the back of it. For each of the kids, they put something that kind of uh, is demonstrates their their character, like whether it's uh, somebody that's well-behaved or uh, a great listener or whatever the case is. Clark got the one for being creative. And I was like, dang, that's great, man. Uh, not only that. I mean, you're talking this kid. I don't need. I don't think I need to tell anybody out there because you guys understand already. Uh, and I might be a little biased here, and I might be a little braggadocious because he's my boy. But we got his report card that day, and not only is the man creative, apparently, and artistic, but also his numbers for his grades are off the charts. They don't do like the A B C system on like this. I don't even know how they do it. They give them like a number rating. And it shows at the beginning of school, the middle of school and end of year. And his numbers were like off the charts. There's like these like almost like long uh, rectangles that are like filled with color. And his was like all the way to the right, which is a great sign. So I like this. I think Clark Mann's the entire package. He's he's intelligent. He's creative. He's funny. And he's caring. Like what more could you want out of somebody? Ladies. So he's going to, he's going to be a really good dude, I think. And, uh, that I think ultimately is my, my life's purpose, right? Produce another, uh, put it, produce a, a, a good human into the world. And if I can do that, I think I accomplished something. So all of that was great after Clark graduated, if you want to call it that, or completed third grade, we always have this tradition where we go out to eat. And for whatever reason, he wanted to go to Olive Garden for this was, I think it's because he's also a very uh, sentimental person and he's a man of tradition. And we went there, I think in like when he completed kindergarten or first grade or something, and he wanted to relive that experience. So we went there and the thing that he wants, there's not a particular meal there that he wants, but you know how they have the soup salad and breadsticks and you have various types of soups you can get with that. He wanted the, the Yonkey soup. He loves it. So he got that, ate a couple bowls of that, had some breadsticks, and he was happy as a lark. We uh, went to TJ Maxx after that. That was that was Cody's 
a little bit of a celebration. That was her last day as well, other than graduation, which was the following day, because the teachers go to that to kind of see off the students, you know, like these, these are the kids that you helped raise and they're off going out into the world to hopefully be good, productive humans. Maybe a little harder to, uh, to manage tons of them than it is one, but, uh, you do your best and hopefully collectively with all these teachers. And I have to say, like, Talk, talking to these teachers, at least the ones at this party, they all truly do care about these kids. And I like to think that these kids are lucky to have them because the teachers I had when I was in school sucked, to, to, to be very honest. And man, if I had these teachers that actually care and were really putting effort into it and the only thing holding them back are, is the kids' effort, wow, it'd be, it'd be amazing. So Cody went to TJ Maxx. She found a whole bunch of clothes and stuff, and it was it was a great time. And that was that was kind of like our day. We made a whole afternoon of that, and uh, I I enjoyed it all thoroughly. I got some video of it, so you'll get to see it all, and uh, you get to see Clark Mann graduating. So it was a pretty pretty cool thing. I guess it's a graduation completion. Do you, I guess you, you can graduate from anything. You graduate from third grade. So that was Wednesday. Thursday was a, a day the Clark Mann. And I were here because Cody had to go to school for like her last day. It's kind of like wrapping everything up. And then graduation is in the evening. There was some hesitation as to whether the graduation was going to be indoors because of the weather. But it got it, it rained, got it out of the system, and it was a beautiful night. In fact, like when they were graduating, the sunset was like incredible. And I bet there were some in, like just crazy sh photos that, that were taken there. They, Cody went as a photographer. He gave her one of my cameras. So she's getting shots of some of the students like accepting their diploma. They had professional photographers there. They had uh, the journalism, like everybody was there taking photos. So there will be no lack of those. But Clark and I stayed home the day. We made like a Lego video. We hung out, had uh, what we do for lunch. I think we did wings for lunch. Yeah. So I get these wings and Clark and I make hot sauces. <laughs> we do like uh like Frankenstein sauces essentially where we take like a barbecue and mix it with like a, a hot sauce. And then we put a little bit of like the sweet sauce in there, stir it up. And it's kind of like our thing we do. So I made some wings in the air fryer and we, we had a, we had a nice day. It was kind of just a chill, chill day on Thursday. And it was cool because like once Cody came home that night, which was pretty late, we're officially in summer vacation time, baby. Like the, the school year is over and now we're in the time of the year that I look forward to the most. That was until uh, that evening when a certain chocolatey creature started having some health problems. Rox E. Bear, as she's known in some circles, she was like panting like crazy and like could not like rest. And she kept like going to the door and standing there. And I let her outside and she'd go outside for a while. And it, was, it started raining that night. And then she's like, laying down out there and she just acting really weird. So I ended up staying on the couch that night and like, she was just would not stop panning. And of course that happened to be like the one night that night and the next day, the emergency vet, that's like maybe 30 minutes from us, they were closed, which does not do you much good to have an emergency vet that's closed. I'm like, what is wrong with her? Like what's going on? And then like the next morning she finally settled, like she was laying, but she looked like she was just like on her way out and Cody was crying and like saying her goodbyes. I'm like, no, we're not doing this right now. I'm, I, we're taking her to the vet. Let's figure out what's going on. So I took her in and they gave her like some anti-nausea medication and they took x-rays and blood work and $1,500 later, if, you, if you're thinking about getting a dog, consider your financials. But, you know, ultimately, you know, no matter how much money I put into to Roxy Bear, She's brought me so much joy in my life and particularly like being here home every day. Like having that dog with me is, is of great importance. And I know that we're on borrowed time now. She's now 13 years and one month old in a chocolate labs lifetime. That is very much like you're in the bonus time right now. So I'm willing to do whatever it takes. And, uh, they, they ran these tests and got the results back. And some things we already knew Roxy has pancreatitis which is not a good thing. It can be painful. And they're thinking that she had a flare up of that. She also has some stuff going on with her lungs and possibly a little bit of like a pneumonia situation, but they don't want to put her on antibiotics because they can make her sick. So she's continuing to take this very expensive anti-nausea medication for like the next week. And then we're going to kind of do it like every other day until she's kind of off of that. And then we'll see where it goes. As for how she's doing, 
she's acting like kind of herself. She's going outside, walking around, being like normal Roxy Bear, very ginger on her like back right leg. I mentioned that to the vet and she was kind of like, well, like that's not related to her situation she's having right now, but we can put her on maybe some like pain, like low level pain meds. And my main thing is like, I just want, I want her to be comfortable. I don't want her to be in pain. And if this pancreatic pancreatitis is causing her pain and then her joints, she has got arthritis so bad. Like she's just an old girl. Uh, so I just, I just want her to continue to live a good quality of life as long as we can. I know that there will be a day that we only have to probably decide that like, okay, this is, this is not working anymore for her, but I, I hope that that day is far from now. And, um, I, I have the strength. Oh gosh. To do that when it happens, like, oh my gosh, when I was sitting in the vet, I was just thinking like, this is where it's going to end probably, right? Like it's not going to be today, but someday I'm going to bring her in here and we're not all going to come back out. Ah, but maybe I'll get lucky and one night she'll just peacefully go in her sleep. That would be ideal, but you just don't know. And, uh, I, obviously when you get a pet, you know what you signed up for. And I have been thinking for like the last year, every single day is like a, a gift. And maybe this is the last time. Maybe, I, you know, we live in the world of last times. Maybe this will be the last time. Last time you go the, to the, to the, for a walk, like right now, I'm like, can she still do these walks that we've been doing? I walk her like a little over a mile and we have a great time out there. She gets some exercise in. She loves to sniff. I get some exercise, listen to a podcast. It's a win for everybody. Can I still do that? Can she still handle that? When's going to be the last time that she can go in the creek? Something she loves. When's the last time we're going to throw a ball for her? All these things might be coming to an end, but she's okay now. Last night, she she kind of woke up panting a little bit in the middle of the night. And I read that this is how a dog sometimes can like display that they're in pain. Because obviously, as a, as a dog, you can't tell people like, hey, I'm, I'm hurt or hey, I'm sick. You, you throw up all over the floor, you pant, you know, that was, that was a part of my night too, that one night. Um, but I let her out and she came back in and she seemed to be okay. She's got, um, some issues, also another issue. She's got a lot of stuff. In fact, the vet called us at a time. She's like, I'm typing up an email with all of Roxy's stuff. It's going to say a lot, but don't be alarmed. She has some issues with gastric emptying, which, uh, means she, she's a little constipated and very gassy. And if you've ever been around a lab before, it's, uh, it's brutal. So <laughs> we're, uh, we're getting through it and, um, I'm just happy that she's, she's still with us. Cause man, it, it did not seem good. And it, this is coming off of like six months of nothing but good. Like she's been great. Chris around Christmas time, we had a similar thing. And, um, I was just like, crap, this is the end. Don't die on Christmas day, Roxy. Like that's all think about the rest of my life. And then like she got off of that and like from January until now, we just been rolling. And then this happened. In fact, like the day before this happened, I took her for a walk. So I don't know. We'll, we'll hope for the best. And, um, you know, we have some trips planned this summer and it's like, holy smokes. I had that conversation with, with Deb where I'm like, she's like, what should we do if something happens while you're gone? And I'm like, you know, I, I desperately don't want to put you through that because she's as much of their dog She's like as, as she is ours, she's always watched her when I was working. And anytime we go somewhere, that's like, that, that's like her and, and Bud man's pet too. And I'm like, you know, if, if, if you have to do it, you know, it, it, I guess that's what it comes down to. It's, yeah, I mean, a part of me would be thankful to not be here for it, but gosh, imagine being on vacation and then you get a call that this happens and like that really sours your experience. And I, I know that seems like really selfish to say, but I mean, it's, it's also the truth. And I think you can probably relate, you know, you spend a lot of money going to have a great time. And, you know, historically it's always been, you know, we'll just drop her off at Yammy. She's going to live her best life. There are lots of treats and, um, you know, just live, sleeping in her bed, you know, and you, you, I'm just worried now. Anyways. Sorry to bring you down with that. I know there's lots of other folks that have had pets and, you know, I probably took you through, the, took you back into that there, but that happened this week. So it's been, it's been some ups and downs. I think we had more ups than downs this week. In fact, that was like, that was the one that was like, shoot, but I'm feeling good now. Roxy's kind of back to being normal and we, we can go back to our, our routine here of talking about Friday, Friday and Saturday were 
very similar days in the fact that I went to community yard sales with Bud and Deb in the morning. I went with them on Friday. Clark Man came along on Saturday. Found some great flips on Friday. Had a had a fun time with them. The weather was gorgeous. And then on Saturday, Clark Man came along. He got a little score that he was excited about. This is a two dollar Minecraft thing. Clark Man's a cheap date going to yard sales. All these little Minecraft figures, and I found some great Lego stuff on Saturday. And these were these are supposed to be like my best community yard sales. They weren't up to par this year, but the weather was good, and I found some stuff both days. Had some fun times with Yummy and Pap. Pet a whole bunch of dogs. Oh my gosh, this one dog that I saw, I think he was a mix of a Australian Shepherd and a Border Collie, and he was just so awesome. And like, as soon as you go to pet him, he rolls on his back, he wants his belly pet. But then the owner was like, yeah, these dogs are great. I got him from the Amish over by where we used to live, actually. But the first year was a nightmare. They chewed everything, including his Crocs. They chewed a car battery. <laughs> he had two of them. He bought two from the same litter. They jumped through the trellis like that work that's on his wall that like beside the door jumped through that to get outside so maybe a little too high energy that being said like my my next dog and i've determined like cody wants a break from dogs but like there will be a day where we get another dog and i think i'm i'm leaning towards a siberian husky and they're high energy too, but I just think they're gorgeous and I just love them. The TikTok algorithm started feeding me the husky howling videos. Oh my gosh. You get a couple of them together. So good. So I've already got a name picked out. Her name's going to be Sasha. Sasha, such a gorgeous name on a gorgeous dog. And like, I don't want to, I don't want to like put that into my future because obviously that means that something bad happened to us, but it's like, you got to have some hope. You know, you got to think like, you know, there. this this isn't the end. And maybe like, I, what's that movie that Clark may watch? I can't watch it because I'll, I'll get destroyed. A Dog's Purpose, where the dog comes back through various dogs. Maybe Roxy will be, will come back through, through Sasha. We'll see. But that's for the future. Uh, Friday and Saturday, also the same in the fact that we finished out the garden situation. I told you before that I had the, all the weeds stripped out. Got the black paper down. Cody was so thankful of that. That made me happy too because I felt like, you know, like that was a big thing to do. And on like husband point meter, reaching high scores. I looked up raised garden beds and I found this YouTube video that I really liked how to do pretty simple ones that I thought I could handle. Because while I may be a very uh, experienced Lego builder, the world of building things out of wood and being a craftsman, carpenter, if you will, probably not for me. Not because I can't envision it. Like in my mind, I know exactly what I want to make. I just don't have the tools and the, the technique to make it happen. But I, I I made this happen. I went to Lowe's. We got the stuff that we needed. We did that together as a family and uh, brought it home. And I, I built my first raised garden bed. And then I realized that I apparently missed the day of math class where we multiplied four by two uh, because I bought four of these like rails that went around and I needed eight. So I had to do the what I make fun of Bud for. Uh, and and I, I think this would be a funny TikTok video if anyone wants to make it. It, it in terms of a job when a dad's doing a job like a, a carpentry job, woodworking job, home improvement type thing. It's not how many hours does it take. It's how many trips to Lowe's or Home Depot is it? That's like a three trip job. That's a fifteen trip job. I had to go back just to get four boards, and I take Cody's truck and strap it all down and all this. But by Friday night at like nine thirty, I had both of my raised beds. I'm starting with two. I'm going to build two more eventually, and then we're going to get a fifth one. So I'll have five four by eight raised beds, and they look nice. Uh, so I, we, Cody helped me carry those out, and then um, we also did dirt. I got my first load of dirt Friday night, like in between these these builds, and we we basically, the gravity has never been so kind to us. I backed the truck right down to the garden bed, and it's kind of on a hill, opened up the tailgate, and just basically formed a dump truck of just dirt right into this and almost filled up the first one. So the next day I went back and got enough dirt to fill up both. And then last night, which was Saturday night, ended up putting all of our stuff in and our garden was complete. And that is where I think the message is here. The beginning of this week, I had a garden that was just full of nothing but weeds. And because I decided that I was going to do this, I got the weed whacker. I, I trimmed it all down. I got the landscaping fabric, put all that out, spent like an entire day working on all this stuff. I learned how to build the boxes, got the materials to do it, built the boxes for it, for the raised beds. We put those out there. I bought a bunch of dirt. I shoveled it into the, the beds. We planted our garden. And now instead of having one week later, instead of having a, a weed field, 
I've got two raised beds that are actively growing tomatoes, peppers, onions, and cucumbers and zucchini on the way. And that just made me feel so darn good. I think I felt the best when I did the thing that I didn't think I was strong in. And I think I need to do more things like this in my life where it's like, I don't think I can do that, but I proved to myself that I can do that. And that was doing the, the garden beds. When I finished those things up and I looked at it, I was like, I made that happen. I did it. And it's the sense of accomplishment. It's like a sense of uh, like self-worth that it increases. You just feel good about yourself and you, it like raises your morale, I guess, or your self-esteem, whatever you want to call it. I just felt pretty darn good when I made that those beds and I got it done. And it all came because I looked out there and I decided that I want to do this and I'm going to make it happen. And I feel like this in so many aspects of my life, like weight loss, for example, we're, we're getting into the summer months. And I've been like doing this for so long, like tracking my weight, not really making much progress. But like, I decided that I'm I'm gonna focus everything I have on it. And when you know it, like right now, like this week, I tracked my lowest weight that I've been ever since I started recording in in four years. And I'm wearing, I'm like putting on a pair of shorts that are like falling off me. And that is a great feeling too. Like these shorts before, like I couldn't even fit into, and now they're like falling off me. Like I need I need a, a size lower. In fact, I started ordering some of my workout shorts. I went, I went, I went down a size from like large to medium and I'm just like, dude, that's great. So like, I just feel like I have the power if I just put my mind to something that I can do it. And in, hopefully through making videos about these things and I talk about this, you know, in a, in, in the moment, in a very authentic way, maybe there's somebody else out there that I can encourage or inspire to do that too, whatever it is. It may not be a raised garden bed, but it's, it could be anything, anything in your life that you're just like, I want to make that happen and you do it. So yeah, that was, that just made me feel good. And like last night looking at over at those raised beds when they were finished, I just had such a, like a sense of accomplishment. And uh, if at the same time we're having our first a little campfire of the night, we have a little fire pit out there. And I bought these mountain pie makers a year ago uh, at a yard sale for a dollar and I cleaned them all up yesterday and I got the rust off of them and stuff. And I made mountain pies for Clark and myself, which are a, a mountain pie is think of a grilled cheese sandwich essentially, but it has like pizza inside of it. And a mountain pie is like this, this thing with a handle that squeezes the, that together. And it's inside of a, like a cast iron metal type thing. And you put that in the fire and you make it, you can also put apple pie filling and stuff in there too. And it was just so awesome. Like we we're just sitting out there enjoying this evening with the fire, the garden. And I just realized that was the place I wanted to be at that time. And I was, I was just happy. So that was my week. Uh, you know, lots of goods, lots of, lots, lots of goods. And then the thing with the Roxy bear, but you know, you gotta, not everything is sunshine and rainbows in life. Contrary to what you might see on every YouTube video you watch or TikTok or whatever, like life hits us and uh, it's how you respond. That's the important thing. And you just got to do the best you can with what you got, right? Uh, other little side things before we get listen listener feedback here, watch a tech in the night that Roxy was second ended up watching a movie called dumb money. It's about the GameStop run where, uh, Keith Gill, a.k.a. Roaring Kitty, a.k.a. Deep uh, Explicitive Value on Reddit, he found out that these hedge funds were shorting GameStop, essentially like betting on GameStop to go out of business. And then that uh, you probably saw this in the news. Uh, there was this rally around it with like just average Joe Schmoes that weren't going to let hedge funds and Wall Street win. So everybody started buying GameStop and the price went up exponentially. And as a result of that, these companies lost their booth all messes. Like they, because when the stock goes up, they become much worse off and they're losing money hand over fist. And this guy was the inspiration behind it, but it's called dumb money on Netflix. And he's just like a regular dude that like inspired some people. And, uh, he was like the the leader behind it. I thought that was very interesting. Gaming wise, in Greg's arcade, I'm still obsessed with this game called Monster Train. I got it for five dollars on Steam, and it's like a card game, like Slay the Spire, where you're given like a random cards and random paths that you can take and options, and then you're like battling through these um, automated b battles in hopes that you outlast the other team. And I just, for some reason, those games just speak to me in my brain. They get the, the things in my brain moving. So uh, I've been playing that, but not nearly as much this week as I played the last week. It, I played one night and it was just such a, it, it's such a, like kind of turn your brain off routine and have a blast. So that was my week in a nutshell. <laughs> Boy, I just looked at the time. This one's going to be a long one, guys. Let's get into some listener feedbacks here. I was just talking about how long this podcast is going on, then everything froze up on me here. But 
<laughs> We're getting a listener feedback here, and I was saying, assuming that I didn't get to say this, that I'm thankful that not only you tune in, but also you become a, a part of the episode by leaving feedback related to last week's episode that we can kind of discuss further and maybe get some different points of views or your experience and such things, starting with Jenny Updike, long time follower. I, I don't want to say subscriber, supporter, I think is the, probably the right word. Jenny's always been there. For me, but she says, I'm, I'm just happy that she's still listening. She says, on the topic of your time is valuable, which was the topic of last week's episode. It was about the, the price of things without price tags, essentially. I've been hiring out things around the house. Yes, I can mulch all my flower beds, but I'm working too much and I don't want to take my downtime to do that. I've even decided to have a pool service take care of my pool after 11 years of me doing that. I've, suppo- I've found supporting small businesses for my needs makes me happy and I get some time back. Exactly. You just have to find out where your priorities are. If it's something that that you don't enjoy, that you would rather spend time doing something else and you have the money to do so, you could hire someone to do do that work for you and then use that time towards something else. Plus, there's somebody that probably does that thing like a pool cleaner. And I watched a YouTube video on this a long time ago. It's like, you know, it was this guy who was outside. He's like, you know, this tree fell over in the storm and I could go cut it up. But he was like an inventor. He was like this eccentric guy. He's like, but I'm an inventor. I could be, I should be going inventing things. That's what I do. There at the same time, there is a guy that has a tree removal service that's just sitting by his phone right now waiting for a job to remove a tree. That's what he does. And he just kind of talked about how everybody has their thing that they do, specialization of labor, I suppose. And you should just do the thing that you're good at. Like, for example, I have my grass mode every week, which I wish I didn't because it's kind of expensive to do. But the guy does a s- fantastic job. And it's I don't have to do it each week. I mainly do it because our backyard goes into like a, a doom drop scenario. And I don't feel comfortable mowing that area. Uh, but I am thinking about like getting a mower and like just having them come back and do the back area. But then it's like, I have that money invested in that. And I need to get like a place to store it, like a shed and it would just get very expensive. And if we were going to live here very long term, I would do that, but I still got my eye out on like my dream farm house type thing. And maybe someday that'll come to fruition. But I, I thought about this in some cases because I'll be in here sometimes podcasting, sometimes making videos, sometimes working on eBay, whatever it is. And they come and mow my yard and they're done with it in like 30 minutes. A couple guys come, they do a great job, probably better than I could ever do. And it's done. I pay them to do that. And at the same time, I'm working, making money to, I guess, pay for that, right? So if you look at it like that, like they are specialized in that. Would I call the mowing guys to come make a video for me or edit a video? No like let, let's let, they do their thing. I do my thing. If that makes any sense. Now there is something to be said, I think about being self-sufficient. And I put a priority on that. I like the idea of doing things for myself. I like being independent as you may have realized. And I like just like not having to rely on others. And for that reason, I do like doing things as much as I can on my own. And I think there is some value in that in a sense of accomplishment. Like, Hey, I want to have a garden this year. I could call somebody to go, you know, do all the weeds and to do all that, build the boxes and all that. But there's something to be said about like the accomplishment. I, would I feel that when I'm done mowing my grass? I think I would. I'd be like, oh man, I did like just the perfect cut. Look at those lines. They're so beautiful. So I'm like, I'm contemplating that. Uh, but right now it's just so easy. <laughs> like they come every week on the same day, they mow it and they're gone. And it's like, it probably saves me a couple hours every single week. So uh, I, I feel you, Jenny, on that. Uh, I, I think I think if you have the money and it's not going to hurt you and you're you, you feel good about like you're you're supporting an, another family out there too that you know they're doing that for a living. I think it's I think it's pretty cool and you get to enjoy your time. Like if all you do is work and then like support the things you have, that's not much fun, right? There should be some fun in life. I think you should spend your time swimming in the pool, not cleaning the pool. Maybe you can do both at the same time. I don't know, but uh, yeah, that's it's it's a tough one in that regard because you're. You know, you're finding a balance between how much money do I spend on having things done versus do I do it to myself and what is that worth to me? So, yeah. Next one comes from Jabbo. He says, I listened to the entire episode while driving between jobs. Metro Atlanta traffic. He he was driving two miles. It was an hour. Uh, glad you found that Thomas score. Definitely good advice on making content about what you like. I think all the videos are behind the scenes, though. Yeah, I don't think I could make a professional video to save my life. The closest I got was doing a printer video. <laughs> and even that was just like a vlog. I, I don't. The problem with making professional videos for me is that I feel like, and this comes like re- Lego reviews, things like that. I feel like. I need to be perfect. 
and I have to like do the same take over and over again and make it the way it is. What I love about vlogging and just sharing myself is I hit that record button and I just, I do it. And say I mess up saying something like this podcast could be edited for sure. And like, I could cut out the ums and uhs and like parts where I, I cry myself silly from talking about my dog. We could edit that out, but there's something to be said about being real, I think. And maybe you mess up, you say something, but in most things, what I love about making videos that I consider to be unprofessional or behind the scenes, it's like, this is a real snapshot in time. This, there is no retaking this. When you walk up to, uh, and uh, you know, or I was going to say yard sale, but like say Clark's doing something, he's being funny or whatever. I can't be like, oh, oh, that's good. Do, do that again. Do that. These moments are fleeting. And, you know, having the record button always going is the most valuable thing you can do. I think Jabbo is, has talked about that before and realized that it's when it, the thing, the best things in life happen when they're, when you're not recording and you're just like, oh, but I, uh, you know, I record a lot. I get a lot of footage and then it's, it's always easier for me to make my sculpture when I have a big block than it is to have a small block and trying to work around that. So that's why it takes me a lot of time to edit, uh, for what seems to be just spur of the moment videos, but like record a lot of footage and then I cut that down. I should just do like a, no one would want to watch this, but if you just want to watch the 75% of my videos that uh, just get deleted, <laughs> that could probably be a whole thing. Uh, but I, I don't know. I just, I talked about it earlier. I just love long form content. I love just being with somebody, you know, uh, I listen to stuff before I go to sleep and I'm just looking for like a 30 minute video, hour long video that I can just listen to. And uh, it just, it feels good, especially if it's somebody you're comfortable with and it's like a recurring thing and stuff. I just, I love that. But yeah, I think all my videos would be considered behind the scenes and I don't think I'd have it any other way. I'm making the content that I enjoy watching and I enjoy making. And, uh, if you're doing that, it's very difficult to get burnout or to not want to do it because you're doing what you love. And that's, that's how I would, I would summarize my, uh, my experience in terms of video making. And I'm just, I'm thrilled that people enjoy watching. I was thinking, I think about it probably more often than what you'd expect. I was thinking this morning too, like, man, I'm so lucky that I get to make vlogs and I'm like, even this podcast, I think about how lucky I am to, to have a podcast and to be able to like sit down and record and talk about my week. This is a podcast that, doesn't really serve people in a way that many do. Like it's not a, it's not an interview podcast where I'm talking to an expert in a field that you're going to get knowledge from. It's not a serial podcast where uh, we're solving a murder mystery, which are super popular. It's not a news podcast. It's not a sports podcast. It's a journal. It doesn't even have a category. There's no journal category on, on Apple, uh, but there's people that find value in it. And that's, that's great. And I, I appreciate that. In uh, the next comment, the, uh, Aged like milk comment of the week came from Sally Wilson, also a longtime uh, supporter. She says, Greg, while I was watching the vlog, it came to me. Why do you want Clark to be a social person when we don't hear about you hanging out with you or Cody's aged friends? Ooh, this this podcast might hurt her a little bit. Not hurt her, but you, know, you get what I'm saying. Uh, I think Clark would like to see some pictures of you with buds or buddies your age. Sorry about nephews. They should take time for their uncle, Greg, or you. This is a comment that I want to talk about. Uh, because, well, we did stuff with our friends this week, so you'll get to see that. But the idea of being social in, re in regards to Clark, it's not about him being a social person. It's him socializing. It's seeing what other kids are like, how to engage with people in the world. I think that's very important in those school age years. That's why I want him in school. It isn't to be social. I don't care if he's an extrovert that needs to be around 100 people at all times to find value in himself and to be worthy. I want him to see like, okay, this is how I react when a kid knocks a ball out of my hands at at the recess. Okay, this is how we all work together to accomplish something in class. This is us being quiet. This is us following directions. This is us listening to a teacher and doing what we're told. This is us excelling at learning. Like all of those things I think are very important and, and a part of socializing. When it comes to me, I'm a very bad friend. I don't like to invest time into friends. I'm, I've am i always been a solo Rolo, like lone wolf type person. That's from my childhood. I was always by myself, like not even with my parents because they, you know, my parents didn't put time into me. I've talked about that. I didn't have many friends or kids in the area. It was just me being by myself. Like this is where I get my energy from. I love this. I love being by myself. This, what I'm doing right now, I love, even though you're here with me, we're together. But like it, my ideal day, I'd, like as a kid, I'd be playing Legos all day, go outside. Like it was always by myself. And I just, I just found great comfort in being by myself. 
And it's interesting how it's almost like a stigma to do things independently. Like people comment on my solo adventure to Hershey Park and they're, you know, they say like, oh, I'd never go by myself or why didn't you go with friends or whatever. But it's like, I love going by myself. I love just ha- being responsible for myself, doing exactly what I want to do, having like the whole thing to just to just do as a solo thing. I mean, obviously, I love being with my family, but like you would never tell me. And this is where I, I think it's interesting. If every video that I did was always with other people, my family, friends, constantly, everybody was always with me. You would never say, Greg, I really think you should take some time for yourself. I really think you, you spend too many, too much time being social. You should really like that, that someone used the word soul giving. You should, you should go, you should do things with friends. It's soul giving. You know, what's soul giving for me being by myself. I'm, I love it. Like people, some people, extroverts, they get energy from being with people, you know, and that like fills them up, fills up their cup, if you will. What fills up my cup is just like having these, these solo experiences fills my cup. Obviously I love having my family and stuff, but I, I I would be fibbing if I didn't say like there's some part of me that really loves the idea like every day when Cody and Clark go to school and it's nice and quiet here and then I can work on all of my goals and the things that I want to do independently. I love that. Um, I think there's some balance like I can get myself into social situations. I have some like anxiety about that a little bit. But when I put myself in there, I find that I thrive in them. I'm great at having conversations with people. And like you would walk away from a like a meeting with me thinking like, oh, he's, you know, he's a normal guy. He's good, like in terms of socialization and speaking and communicating and all that. But that doesn't fill up my cup in the way that like just being with myself does. And I think there's something to be said about being comfortable with yourself and like not needing any external stuff to like find happiness. Like there's some people that like you live on an island by themselves and they they love it. But we look at those people as like outsiders and weird, maybe because we're social creatures and we're herd animals ultimately. But like, yeah, you are definitely like, it's almost like like looked down upon if you're an independent person that doesn't need a bunch of other people. Like how many people wouldn't go out to dinner by themselves or go out to eat or be seen by themselves doing a lot of things like like a amusement park, for example. And why is that looked down upon? What is wrong with that? It's just it, it's it's one of those things. But like I have I have a few friends and like they they reach out to me sometimes, but it like I don't know what it is. It just always feels like an obligation to me. And I just I don't know. I just love I just love the solo life and like I, I thrive in it. And I don't think I really need to justify it or like make excuses for that. I just think we should all, and this is, I think the, 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 the best thing, do what makes you happy, but don't worry about criticizing other people that don't do what you do. Like if I saw someone that was around a ton of people all the time, I would never be like, oh my gosh, like that person can't be alone. And some people can't, like I listened to a podcast of a guy, like the original audio journal that I used to listen to when he was like sharing about his family and the life situation, they have a family of introverts. Like everybody kind of does their own thing within the house and they have one daughter who's an extrovert and she's a pain in the butt to them. Cause she just can't be alone. She can't like, she always needs somebody around and like to be with her and like all this. And like, it, it bugs the heck out of the rest of them. So it's like, you know, it, it, it you could go either way and it just depends on the, 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 the tribe you're with. But man, like for me, I'd much rather go for a nice walk by myself listening to a podcast than go have a uh, coffee or breakfast with a friend. That's just what powers me up. And maybe you're like that too. If you are, I'd love to hear from you. But yeah, sorry, Sally. I uh, We actually did stuff with friends this week, so you can take your comment back. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> Next one comes from Janelle. It says, happy Sunday morning. It is actually now. Kids grow up really fast. I probably only have another year or so before grandma's house is boring. My grandson just turned 11. I loved watching Clark at the yard sale. I went on my yearly retreat last week and even went yard sailing in Parma, Ohio. The Ohioans know how to yard sale. She didn't say that. I did. I, I can't wait to see your Hershey video. My mother's my mother teaches figure skating at the Hershey ice rink, so we go multiple times a year. As an employee, she can get up to four people in as a benefit employee benefit, which is a great perk. Free park entrance. Greg, I'll tell you checking out your Thomas scores. Awesome. You just unlocked a memory for me. When I was in daycare, we went to the Hershey Park ice skating rink. That's something I've never done in my life outside of that was ice skating. I've never, I don't know how to ice skate, rollerblade, roller skate, or ski. 
And I'd like to try those things out and see if I can do them. But And we've learned from this episode that if I just decided that that's what I want to do, like if I want to learn how to rollerblade, all I have to do is get some rollerblades and we make it happen. And then I'll make a video where I'm at the hospital with my cast <laughs> on my arm, right? It'll unlock new adventures for us. But yeah, that's that's pretty darn cool. I'm glad you're out yard sailing. As far as your grandson, I like to think that maybe you'll have more than a year. I know as kids turn into teenagers, maybe things change a little bit, obviously, as I talked about with my nephews. But it all depends on how you raise them. I know Jabbo's probably listening unless he's he's uh, got to his destination by now. And I always, and I know I only saw like little glimpses of this, but I always admired him and his son when they'd make their Lego videos together. And they just seemed like such a good team. And they, they were like, like bonded in a way that like you could tell the chemistry was there for obvious reasons. And it wasn't, it didn't feel like he was being dragged into that or he didn't truly enjoy being there. And I'm hoping I can do that with Clark, man. Again, I think these kids just like, they're cool with being with adults as long as like you are with them at the, like at their level. Not that they're below adults, but like most adults just kind of write kids off, I find. And that's not me. That ain't me, babe. Anyways, let's go on to the next one. Thank you, Janelle, for the comments and everyone so far. Next one comes from Amos, Amos Cottrell, says, Greg, do you promote your eBay listings? I've done it on my listings in the past. Just wondering your experience with it. Thanks. I don't promote them because uh, eBay takes a cut of that, and I already give eBay enough money. How I promote my listings is by making them the cheapest ones available with great photos and great descriptions. That's all you need to do. Like if Let, let the price speak for itself. Uh, I, when I list something, I look at the prices of everything. And usually I get things so cheap that I can afford a little less margin. You know, like say it's a, say it's a video game I got at a yard sale for a dollar. I can afford to sell that for $10. Whereas maybe you bought it originally for $60 and you're like, Oh, I don't want to let that go for $10. Like hey, I just I paid 60 bucks for that. I'll put mine at nine 99. Yours is at 10 using just made up examples. And, uh, and I sell quickly because of that. Almost all of my listings have the word like great price under them because when you go to the bins and you get something for three bucks and you sell it for 25, that's great profit. I don't need to promote it. I never do. Never will. Never will I ever consider promoting it. Maybe it works for some people, but I, one of my buddies in the brick tech discord now Greg's extras discord, uh, promoted one before. And I think they took like, was it like 25% or something like that? I'm like, you're not doing that much for me. Holy smokes. Anyways. <laughs> Next one comes from Clay Turtle. It says, good morning, Monday morning for him. Uh, Clark is going to become a mini you. Yes, he will. Lasers. YouTube and selling. They both say boys become their father, and you seem to be a good one to follow in the footsteps. I, well, I do my best. It says, the fuel bottles will be like fidget spinners eventually. Mark will be flooded when no one wants one. Please say it's not so. I bought 15 more this week. <laughs> Only because I sold like six over like last week, and I'm, I was... I need more more inventory, baby. We'll see. We'll ride it to the bottom. Just like the Keith Gill, Rory and Kitty in the GameStop thing. It says, got to find a happy medium in what I have. What to have. Sorry. I value my time more than most people I know. There will be some things I will waste time because money is important as well. Money makes the world go around. I can never do an amusement park by myself. So here you go. Uh, why? He says, I enjoy the company of the people I bring along. I could see that. I understand that. And I did feel like when I was there, it'd be nice to have Cody and Clark along. But I also really love the fact, like, I'm going to ride these scary frigging coasters and I can do it in the order I want, how I want to do it. And I'm just on my own doing it. I love that. Maybe that'll serve me well someday when I walk the Appalachian Trail too. I'll just be out there by myself and on that adventure. I tried, tried convincing Cody to come along. I feel like 10-year-old Clark and 40-year-old me, 39-year-old Cody could definitely give a run at the uh, Appalachian Trail. But I seem to be the only one that's like has that as a life goal right now. So maybe we'll just have them meet me along the way as I go down through. Could I afford to do six months? It, man, that's the thing. I don't. I, why are we getting into this right now? But you've kind of like got me thinking about that, like doing things on your own. And that's like the biggest thing that I want to do on my own is I want to walk the entire lap, Appalachian Trail with the only thing stopping me would be a catastrophic injury or death. And I would love to do it with, with my family. That'd be crazy. Clark out there. Gosh, that'd be something. I'd be carrying his backpack, carrying him. Um, six months is how long it takes. I'd be away from my, uh, my job for six months, which I, I could do that much easier than most people. In fact, I could be working while I do it. But giving up six months of life with your family, with your dog, with your wife, with your kid, with, with everything, 
that's a lot to take on. And I don't know how that would, would, uh, how I'd fare with that. I say now, like, Oh, I love going to the amusement park by myself and doing everything that I love to do. But you know what I love doing after that? Coming home to my family, telling them all about the day, spending time with them. I, I couldn't do that after a day on the Appalachian trail, maybe a phone call. I might be able to pull that off if I stand up on top of a, a mountain or something. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I should try just a little thing. I'll just walk through Pennsylvania, which happens to be like a really difficult state to get through. Rocksylvania, as they call it on the trail. There's my tangent for you, Clay Turtle. Hope you enjoyed that one. He says, I'll play a game of risk against you. It's a hard game, but dominating the world is fun. I got out of the yard sale last week. The boring stuff you do is the most entertaining. Life is not all about the highs all the time. Life slows down, and those are the moments I look forward to. Thanks for the encouragement on getting out there, finding something else I want to do for a job. What I do isn't bad or the people, it's just mind numbing and does not make a difference. Sorry for the downer comments last week and this week. My daughter loves the Scooby cup. I sold him, he bought, he bought my Scooby cup that I found at a state sale. I was just buying cool stuff that I liked and his daughter loves it. Said she'll never use it for drinks, but we'll have a special place on a shelf in her house. Thanks for a great Monday morning. Listen as always, dude, I love it. Uh, for your job, yeah, I, I get you. Like, I felt like my job was was negatively affecting people. I felt like when people met with me, not, not me specifically, met with us, they were worse off when they walked out of there than when they walked in. And that didn't jive with me. I want to do something to put a positive, like a little positive dent in the atmosphere, in the universe, <laughs> dent in the atmosphere, <laughs> spray some aerosol in it. But yeah, I don't think it hurts to see what's, what opportunities are out there. Worst case scenario, there is none. Worst case scenario, you don't get hired. Worst case scenario, you keep doing what you're doing and you you, you know you just continue on with life or you try again. Uh, but just like we said in this episode, you just got to make it happen. You got to make a decision and then make it happen. Go out and do it. Get it done. Uh, but man, way easier said than done. I'll, I'll give you that. And it's nice to have your level of comfort and you, you know, like you're safe and you don't want to leave your cocoon. I've been there. That's maybe that's why I don't put myself out there as much. Right. Next one comes from Alex K says, I'm packing eBay items nearly every day. And after a while you can get super quick at folding and trimming and taping printed labels onto boxes. And there's a technique where you, the tape you use you would have needed to use anyway to seal the box. I do, however, suspect my printer's ink cartridges are counting the number of pages before they run out rather than being based on the tiny amount of ink consumed. Did your break-even analysis buying a label printer consider electricity and space it would consume from your house? No, I didn't go that far. I just decided like, and let me be clear, buying that label printer was a great investment. Even if it was financially not the best one, like if you already have a printer, this is what I say. If you already have a printer and you're printing labels, you might as well just use the printer you already have and the ink you already have and the paper you already have. It's cheap once you have it, other than the ink cartridges. And if you're printing every once in a while, but if you're printing eBay items every day, like I was doing, sometimes like right this weekend I sold like eight items. You know how much time that is? Like the time is the thing that I can just click a button on my phone and it just goes, and then I peel it off and put it on the box. Before I was doing all this, this taping and cutting and stuff. And like, okay, I spent $75 on that label printer. I would have spent 40 bucks on an ink cartridge, I think is what they are. Maybe they're like 25, 20, maybe I get a two pack for 50. It takes a long time to go through those, but the time is what I wasn't accounting for. Like going from say just a couple minutes, just say you take two minutes on each one of those. Okay, just this weekend, let's say I have eight items, two minutes per item. That you know, that's cutting and then taping and all that. Maybe you can do it faster. I mean, maybe if you have a production facility there, I'm sure you could you could speed run this if you had to. But I'm just making it simple. Two minutes, eight items. That's 16 minutes today that I'm going to save. 16 minutes today. Let's say that I, on average, let's say I save five minutes a day. That'd be 35 minutes a week times 52 weeks. 1500 minutes. Like, what is that $75 worth to you? I pay someone to mow my yard every week. How is that not worth it? And man, it's so darn convenient. And I have like zero regrets on buying that thing. And the only regret that I have is that I didn't do it a year sooner because I was like being a cheapskate and I'm like, oh, I'll just use my printer and I can print other things. I don't print other things. Literally the only thing that printer is used for is labels. So if you are getting into eBay and like, cause you listen to this podcast, this crazy guy that buys fuel bottles and goes to the bin store and goes yard selling and then sells on eBay and seemingly has a fun time doing it all. Just get a label printer. 
don't worry about the other printer. It, it works with your phone. Get a Bluetooth one. Use the one. Use my Amazon affiliate link that's uh, on that ink or in that printer video. And uh, it's just so nice. It does a job. I'm going to have to get uh, labels, which are $20 for 500 of them. So you are going to have a little bit of money invested, but what's your time worth? That being said, if you're the type of dude or girl that's just having, you know, maybe you're watching uh, dumb money on Netflix while you're you're doing all your eBay stuff and time is not of the essence. You already have the printer and stuff. And you don't really care about spending the time and effort and the tape. I didn't account for the tape cost either. I don't know how much, how many feet of tape I was using per label and how much that would cost. I could do a really deep dive analysis probably, which would be really fun. How long until my label printer pays for itself would be a great video, like a short video. If you're just having fun, don't worry about it. But man, I, from, from, from seeing the, what could be to what was with the printer. I'm just, uh, I'm so happy to have it, honestly, but do what, do what makes you happy, right? That's what we've determined here. I think, right? This is me trying to force you to be social. You know, why don't you get a label printer? All the people that are label printing have label printers. Everyone does it that way. Why wouldn't you do it that way? We're all doing it. I couldn't imagine cutting and printing labels. Could you imagine doing it that way? If that's what you prefer, same principle. Well, don't force your stuff on other people. You can encourage him though if you want. Next one comes from my buddy Jim Rolf. He says, Fast pass is an added cost, but so worth it. My son just went to Cedar Point and all the coasters were an hour plus, so his friends wouldn't wait to ride them. They ride all the small rides and played games, so they had fun, but no coasters. I just cannot wrap my brain around it. I told him if he called me, I would have told him to buy the fast pass next time. To go to Cedar Point and not ride a roller coaster is like going to a restaurant and not getting a meal. It's like going to a restaurant and ordering a water and a pack of crackers. That's what you're there for. I do hear you, though. Those hour waits, when you see 60 minutes on a wait time, it hurts. It hurts your soul in a place that you didn't know could be hurt. And it really has to be worth it. But that fast pass, they're freaking expensive. So, again, it's another one of those things, just like we talked about last week. Do you value your time or your money? And could you spending, I don't know what the fast passes there cost. Let's just say $100, $100. What if you got to ride six more rides that day and you spent, instead of spending all that time just standing in lines waiting for rides, you got to have a blast. If it's the only day you're there, you drove there, you went all the way, I say you might as well pony up the cash to do it. That being said, if you go every weekend and it's not a huge deal and it's like, oh, I'll ride three rides today, we'll wait in line for it, so be it. But the fast pass is glorious. You you feel like a, uh, like a first class citizen. Honestly, I last time I did a fast pass. Well, we do it at Disney sometimes, but we did it at the water park, and there was like lines of people with tubes standing like all the way up this hill, like waiting in line, like wrapping around. Clark and I, I didn't seem like anyone got the fast pass there because Clark and I would walk up, literally just walk right up, and then get in front of the person that's standing. This sounds awful. Standing like in line next to to get up, to go down, and you imagine they waited in that whole line, and then all of a sudden the, the, this guy, the schmo, and his kid walk up and then go down in front of you. And uh, there was no limit to it, so I could have just kept doing that over and over again. Like I would, I could have walked past the same people over and over again as they're slowly progressing up. I did pay for that though, but for me, it was like this is the only day we're at the water park. Do I want to spend my whole day standing in the sun? waiting to go down a water slide or do I want to get my full value out of this? And it's oftentimes at these parks, it's pay to win, pay to play. And uh, I, I did that. But you might be thinking, well, Greg, that's nice, you you rich dude or whatever. But it's not that. It's just like, hey, I drove two hours to be here. We're going to be here all day. I want to ride all these darn slides, right? So for me, it was worth it for you know some families. You know, you go there, you got three kids. It's going to add all this money on. You're already buying food that's exorbitant. You guys go wait in line. You know that that that's respectable too. But I don't know. It's I guess priorities and what you're willing to tolerate. But if I had the choice of going to Cedar Point and riding no coasters because the lines are so long, or spending whatever it takes to get on them, I would spend the money. Because it's an experience, it's memories too. Next one comes from Ashley. This is actually the, the last one. He says, hi, Greg. We had our community yard sale yesterday. I made $112. That's a lot of money in the yard sale world, which I didn't think was too bad. It's always interesting uh, to me to see what people buy. A lot of times the things I think are going to sell don't and things that I think no one will buy, they do. I donated what it was left. Smart move. Kids growing up is so bittersweet. 
Kyle Lennon are doing exactly what they should be, and that's great, but it's hard to see them grow up. I think as we get older, our perspective on life changes, and it just makes you think about things in a different way. We're excited to see what you guys are up to this summer. Have a great week, and we'll find you while you know the rest. How perfect of an ending is that? Totally agree with you, though. The yard sale thing, you know what they say? One man's junk is another man's treasure. I think that's the definition of yard sales. And I also think that yard sales, what you did is great because it was stuff that you didn't have a use for anymore. It wasn't serving you. You put it out for sale. People that found value in it bought it, made a little money, and the rest got donated to other people that may find value in those things. And you got rid of a bunch of stuff. Your life's less cluttered. You got some money. People got some great scores. They probably made a YouTube video about how you sold your entire Lego collection of them for $5 and how excited they are. Who knows what it was, but it's like a win, 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 win. And uh, I agree with you. Kids are going to grow up. That's what's going to happen. You can't hold on to your precious little babies forever. You got to let them leave the cage and let the wings fly. And as time goes by, I'm sure we'll see that with Clark, man. But in the meantime, and as you brought up about the summer, we're going to make the best darn use of our time that we have. And I'm going to have the greatest time that I possibly can And I'm going to document it and share it with you, which uh, I hope you enjoy tuning into. Just like I hoped you enjoyed tuning into this podcast episode. This one went a little long. I had to restart the timer, but I feel like this one was a little long. So I hope it kept you busy if you're driving in the uh, metro Atlanta area and uh, you're getting rocks shot at your windshield left and right. Hope it kept you occupied there. If you're at your job that's mind-numbingly boring, maybe this added a little bit to it. Maybe you're walking your dog. I hope that's what you're doing. (laughs) Whatever you're doing, I hope you had fun listening in. I love doing these episodes. That being said, there may be, you know, we're getting in the summer season. I got to give you a little something here. There may be a week where there, we're missing an episode, okay? Don't get worried. I didn't die. I'm sorry to not be there with you. I don't like to announce ahead of time when we're not going to be here. Not a good move. Uh, but if there's not an episode, just know this. We're out doing something really awesome, and there will be a video to accompany that awesome thing. and There will be a podcast episode following that later where I recount those awesome things in in this format. So uh, don't get too upset. Hopefully there's another podcast out there for you. But I do know that it is like super painful to like have this thing that you rely on every week and it's not there. But I'll I'll try to do that for you. And as long as I'm still kicking, literally and figuratively, this podcast will be a thing and it will be something that hopefully you can tune into and enjoy. So on that, I hope you did. And uh, as always, just like Ashley said. We'll find you in the next Missing Pieces.